There are four main ways to buy a collector car. From a dealer, from a private party, in an online auction, and at one of the big in-person auctions. We're going to explore all four methods, the pros and cons of each, and a few examples. Buying a collector car from a dealer is very similar to buying a modern used car from a dealer because they are regulated by the state and have certain procedures that they have to go by, which may or may not include a warranty or guarantee on the car or the powertrain or any part of it. If there is a guarantee, and if there are parts to be provided post-sale or any services to be performed by the dealer, make sure that's included in writing in the sales agreement because that protects you and the dealer. You're going to pay a little more for a car from a dealer than from a private party because that dealer has to make a profit to stay in business. But if he's willing to stand behind the car and help you with it if something goes wrong, well then, that can be a very good thing. When I was Scott's age, we'd look for private party sale ads in the classified section of all the local newspapers, in local specialty publications like the Thrifty Nickel, national ones like Auto Trader or Hemmings. Now, you look on Craigslist, you look on Auto Tempest to look at Craigslist around the country, you look at Facebook Marketplace, you look at Facebook groups to find cars that are specific to your taste or your need. So this is a car that we found a reference to in an online ad and it turned out the car was only uh, about three cities over, about 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes from the house. So we went to see the owner and he'd owned this car for 20 years. He'd done a full strip down and repaint and told us all about it. Yeah, the benefit of seeing a car in person is that we were able to actually take this for a little spin, a little joyride and see how it performed and really got to do our due diligence and got a lot of time to speak with the previous owner about what he had done to the car and where it had been previously. So private party sales can give you a lot of confidence in what you're buying because a dealer is not going to have the full history of the car or uh, how many boxes of parts you had to bring down from the garage attic? Probably four or five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so lots of spares uh, included as well in a private party sale. Uh, I think the owner was really quite forthcoming about all the work that he had done. Uh, he'd replaced the carburetor and manifold. He'd done a full strip down and repaint, done some upholstery work. But of course there are things that need a little tweaking, like the power steering leak we have, which was disclosed, yeah. maybe not to the degree that it actually is, but you're, of course you're going to find problems or things you don't like or things the previous owner did that they might not have been skilled to do that you're gonna to have to change in a private party sale. Now, the best thing about buying from a private party is you can go look at the car, talk to the owner, maybe drive the car, and if you can't reach agreement, you can walk away. Yeah, and as opposed to an auction setting, bartering is encouraged. So if you can't agree, walk away. Make sure you have the owner's phone number and give them a call several days or a week later. Now, you risk losing the car, but you also have a chance to come back and maybe make a better deal. Uh, we bought this one on the first visit, brought it home, found a few things that needed attention, but overall, I was happy with the experience and I felt we bought a good car at a fair price. I absolutely agree. Now, let's move on to auctions. Let's start with the online version. There are all sorts of online auction sites today where you can buy collector cars. Uh, beginning with eBay, they pretty much started it all and they still do a very brisk business in cars and parts. Bringatrailer.com now auctions over 800 cars a week and the best feature of Bring a Trailer, Cars and Bids, P Car Market and these other online car auction sites are the comment section. Yeah, I see you on there quite frequently. And <laughs> Um, honestly, they're a trove of information, people asking other experts, asking questions you might not have even thought of, and one answered that are important to that specific car. So in this case, we found this car on one of those big online auction sites. Great photography. The owner said he had spent over $75,000 in restoration, and I think it shows. Yeah, absolutely. 
You have very in-depth descriptions and photographs on those auction sites, but you're just not going to get the level of detail you would if you saw the car in person and were able to drive it. And we found that out once we got it home. Uh, the ride height was too high. The uh, seats seemed misplaced. There just wasn't enough headroom. It needed to be, they needed to be further back. And there are other things that needed to be attended to by somebody who really knew second generation Camaros. Fortunately, such a person was only about half an hour away, Joey Gray in Arcadia, North Carolina, who works on just second gen cars. So now, uh, this car was close, it was beautifully done, but now I think it's the car we wanted. Yeah, absolutely. Also say it gave us the confidence to buy a car that was well out of driving distance for us. It expands your reach and gives you an extra boost of confidence when buying a car across the country or upstate or wherever that you might not be able to go see in person, but you would still really want to buy that car. Plus, there's the fun and the anticipation and the trepidation uh, of bidding and trying to buy a car at auction. So online auctions, I think, are great for cars that, as Scott says, that you have a lot of confidence in that you are getting what you're seeing, uh, that the car and its provenance all matches up with the photography and videos that are available on the auction site. Finally, there are the big in-person collector car auctions. Now, I do the TV at Barrett-Jackson. Mecham is also nationally televised, and both those companies do auctions all across the country. There's RM Sotheby's. There's Haggerty's new division, Broad Arrow Auctions. There are a lot of regional auction companies, like the Greensboro Auto Auction, their collector division here in the Carolinas, and the Raleigh Classic. And they all have pretty much the same format. Uh, you buy a bidder pass, and you see a car you like, you raise your hand, and when the music stops, you pay the hammer price, plus a commission of between, say, uh, 6 and 10%. So we went to one of those big auctions, and I was immediately drawn to the 76 BMW 2002. I'm sure you can see why. It's absolutely gorgeous. We got to dive pretty much inside and out of this vehicle. Couldn't quite find the consigner to give him a chat, but that is an option. And um, that's how we were initially attracted to this car. So Scott went up on the block to bid on it. Uh, he had set himself a budget. And when it got to the right number, that's where the hammer fell. So how do you feel about your purchase? I feel great. It's somewhat of an intoxicating experience yeah. having the TV camera and a bunch of people staring at you, cheering you on. Um, I was lucky enough to come away with this. A bit more invigorating than clicking the uh, place bid button on the computer. Um, I'm very happy with this purchase overall, but again, like the other cars, there are, it did, this one didn't come without its fair share of issues. Yeah, we get this car home, we find that the uh, right front tie rod is not tight, that the front end alignment is off by half an inch, which is pretty huge. We had noticed earlier the PCV valve was missing and the crankcase vented right into the engine compartment, so lots of fumes. So one by one, we're addressing those things uh, to make this the kind of car that the Scott is really going to enjoy. So in summary, all four means of buying a collector car have their advantages and maybe slight disadvantages, but one thing is for certain. When these cars are 40, 50, 60 years old, just because they're beautiful, don't assume they're perfect. You're probably gonna have a little work to do once you get one home uh, and into the future. But then again, isn't that part of the fun? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, and that's how you buy a collector car in one of four major ways. From a dealer, from a private party, in an online auction, and in one of the big be there and raise your hand auctions. They're all fun.